produces, you know, the oil that this country thrives on. You said earlier you want to see restructuring. When you say restructuring, what do you want to see? Well, the first thing I want to see is for this country to go back to where we stop the principle of derivation, where the man that produces groundnut and cocoa has a lot of money to spend. I will always use that to send all the Westerners to the university on scholarship, build cocoa house. The granite pyramid they used to send their people to the army and use the money to develop their area. Why is it that when it is oil, the, the narrative change? You now bring the you now land use act to steal by force what belongs to supposed helpless people. And that has continued. Let me just mention something. There was a memorial bus donated in the name of Kesaro and at work. No mesh, no engine, no tire that we were supposed to use. Platform London donated. We were supposed to use to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the mother of cancer. It's been seized today, since 2015, by Ahmed Ali, the custom board, because he was the only military officer on the tribunal that, that, that murdered Ken. Nobody is talking. The man who was the chairman, Justice Alta, has been rewarded as the, chairman, as the president of uh, court of federal court. Okay. That kind of thing. It's injustice. We must go back to reverse all these things. Go to the Niger Delta where I come from. The East West Road. We should we go out to fight first so before they will do so. Let's okay. go back. Let's to that point. Let's stop. Let's go back. Reverse it. Scrap the land use acts. It's antiquated, of course. Then um, principle of derivation. Start. We produce our oil, we sell, and give money to the center, as the Awura was did. Uh, is that a good place to start if um, we're talking about restructuring, or are we going to end up with the situation where 10 years, 50 years from now, we will say what you just said, which is we've been restructuring since 1934? You see, I listened to him very carefully. It's very interesting that all the examples he gave had nothing to do with structure. They are all about process. I'm a social scientist. In social science, we always talk of a twin. There's structure, there's process. He is talking about policy. He is talking about law. He is talking about democracy. These are issues around process. So the first point we need to clear in this country is that often, when people talk about structure, they actually mean process. So there's a huge problem about terminology. The second point I want to make about uh, structure is, let's go back to the original scene. The original scene of structure in this country, you had three regions, one of them the north, 70% of the territory, 55% of the population, in 1959 when the first election took place. That meant it was a loaded structure that gave permanent power to one group. And that is historically the basis for demand of restructuring. And then we embarked about on that journey and from those three regions, two originally in 1934, we now have 36 and a half states the FCT being the half states. So what does that mean in terms of where we've been headed for? Throughout that process, we were talking structure, while the real issue is that the process, the issue of democracy, the issue of the rights of the people, the issue of who exercises power, the people or a minority elite, all those issues have been neglected. And I think part of the debate is really to educate ourselves that often we have serious problems of uh, process that we think are pro uh, problems of structure. Okay, thank you very much. Um, don't forget, um, you can watch us. We are streaming live on Facebook, YouTube, and Periscope. And you can join the conversation on Twitter at um, Channels TV or at Gadria Ahmed. I want to start um, bringing in... Um, the audience. And what I'd like us to do is, um, if you don't mind, um, when you are about to speak, if you could tell us who you are, just so that our audience have a context of 
um, the place your comments are coming from. And if we could start, I think there's um, someone already holding a mic. Um, your, your comments about what has been discussed so far about uh, Biafra being a metaphor for restructuring and the issues that we're trying to grapple with around what sort of restructuring we should be looking at if that is the solution. Well, uh, thank you very much. Um, and thank you for inviting me. Um, I think... Um, Your name, sir, please. My, name, my name is uh, Honorable Mohamed Kumalia. I was a former minority leader in the House of Representatives, 1999 to 2007. Um, I think um, the first thing is that we cannot continue to live in the past. We cannot continue to converse the mistakes or the perceived mistakes of key actors that took place maybe 50, 60 years ago as a justification for what is happening today. What do I mean? Um, the gentleman, Mr. Odia, if I got his name correctly, you know, um, kept talking about the foundation and the starting point and the mistake, you know, uh, during the First Republic and so on, which Professor Jibo, to my mind, has, has really addressed those issues. But from that time till now, Hasn't there been any opportunity to get things right? And even today as we speak, we're talking about restructuring. Today it has become the most common cliche that people use just to vent their frustration. But as you rightly said, no particular you know, <laughs> uh, person or two people could tell you and it, the exact meaning of restructuring as far as they're concerned. Okay. I... Yeah, so go on, but I, you need to hurry because I need to you know, get more people yes. in. Yeah. I want to see a lot of change in Nigeria. If you like, call it restructuring. Call it whatever. But I want to see a Nigeria where the resources of the people get to the people. I want a discussion about what kind of healthcare system should Nigerians have? Okay, and 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 I suspect that there are people who may say to you, you "Might be putting the cart before the horse." So I, I will come back to you if I can, but I want to bring a few more people in. He made a point about um, going to the past, I, and I want to ask the question of this panel and also the, the studio audience: um, Is remembering important, in your view, um, Professor? Or Dean well, quite, quite clearly, I think memory is, is significant. The question is, what do you do with memory? I, I like to think that there are at least three versions of the Biafra advocacy. There is Biafra as memory, honoring memory. There is Biafra as metaphor for exclusion. And there is Biafra as territory. Now, I think it's important to distinguish these three because there are three different things. And a lot of people who agree to one or the other may not agree to the other. And that is why the totalitarian, for want of a better expression, deployment of epithets, of, of identity as epithet, is problematic for me. Oh, Ibos. Oh, Fulanis. Oh, Yorubas. I think it's very offensive. The way we refer to uh, Ijos, uh, Jonathan created the Job Mafia. You know, the way we talk about ourselves in Nigeria is terrible. And I think one of the things we can agree is we should stop referring to one another in epithets. But should we honor the memory? Yesterday, there was the launch of a book here in Abuja on General Zakaria Memalari, who was the first combatant officer in the, Niger in the Nigerian army, killed in January 1966. That was honorable memory. And I think we should celebrate that. Now, so... Now, in, in that context, therefore, I am for Biafra as memory. But Biafra as territory is a different proposition. Mm -hmm. There are some people who want to argue that. And let me end on this note. Uh, people talk about restructuring. I want to put two other expressions on the table. 
One is citizenship, and one is agency. Uh, because it, it, now, why would somebody like Gideon Oka decide? I want our enemies to know that we are determined, determined to bring about the effort by His grace, not our own power. Because we are mortals, we have no power. And I'm an easy. Again, Jack is able to go up here. Only him. What brings me joy and gladness is that there are some people, young people that left not too long ago. They are having a national youth summit for believers. Those of us under this very club, under this bank. I think something around July, the fifth of July, I said. Before Radio Kappa came, before we came, or should I say, before people came here, I'm determined that we should come. I hardly go out and go to see people like you, just this way. What am I doing? Eh? I'm sure you know that. Never before. Never. If you're looking, you see, this man's celebrating. I never saw people moving about like this. Proudly on the road. Yes. If you have seen it, tell me. Before, it wasn't there. It's five years. It's five years. Amazing. But that tells you how far we have come. That now people proudly stand up and send the gift of the Lord. Yes. Yes. You know what it means? As we are saying in every blessed day, some is the most high watching us. And saying, the thoughts of those people will be those of this man. And the effort. That's all. You know that? They said, uh, because of you, not because of um, our righteousness or because we are good, no. As I told him also inside the world, people are here, my uncle knows you, this is the thing that I have here. The other. Yes. If you don't do that, how are you going to worship me? How? Can you worship the first time in the current land? No. Because right now in the current land. In case some of you think that what happened, in Egypt or the flood, when the children who were taken into captivity in Babylon, they also sang the song and said, "How can we put you in a strange land? It's not possible." Yes. Is that correct? Yes. So people are there and they say, "Yes." If he wants us to build temples and not churches. Your people should have not forgiven. But Biafra had better come. Because when Biafra comes, according to this divine word, when we go out and we start to think of people, we say, without him, that we don't get out, we don't understand that. Yes. And there is no stronger message of compassion than that. The reason why the Jacobites have kept the message of the Gospel is because he brought them out from Egypt. Is that correct? Yes. You must do as you are told. Everything I tell you is a message from heaven. I can't wait to ask you not to eat. Not to stop eating grass. Never. Anything I tell you is how heaven wants me to tell you. Sometimes I go out to listen to advice from people. Things every morning, as I was going to it's the first time, prophets have come to help me. People I do not know to start listening to the counsel and advice of men. And do not think that you think that I'm putting me to do.